Alrighty, so in this video, we're going to be looking at the electricity equation V equals IR. And we're going to look into some of the problems that people have when they're trying to use it. And we're going to have a look at how we can solve those problems. So the first thing you encounter is a lot of people don't really understand what this equation is really saying. So that's what we're going to start off by looking at, what this, what it is a statement of. Second thing is, People apply it like a blunt instrument, as in you get a question with some kind of electricity, people bung in two numbers into this equation and hope it will give them the correct third value. They're basically using it like a hammer to hit problems with, instead of what it actually is, which is like a, a very a fine screwdriver, a, a way of teasing problems apart and finding things. So um, we're going to take a look at how we can use the equation a bit more precisely in specific scenarios we can actually see why it's such a powerful tool in electrics. So let's start off with this first one, what the equation is really saying. So we're actually going to rethink it. So when I teach this, I never actually teach it in the form V equals IR. I actually teach it for what it is. And this equation is a statement of what resistance is. So what this is equation is saying is that the resistance between two points in a circuit can be found if we know the potential difference between those two points and the current flowing between them. So it's just a statement of the definition of resistance. So um, if this is going to work correctly, we will need the potential difference measured in volts, not kilovolts or megavolts or millivolts or anything like that. We need it in volts. And we need the current in amps, not milliamps or kiloamps, something like that. So remember, these are the units we need in this equation. If we do that correctly, it will output a resistance in ohms. So this is what I think of the equation as actually being. It's a statement of what resistance is. So let's actually have a look at carefully applying this to a few different scenarios. And we'll start with a nice basic series circuit type example. So with each of these examples, I've just restated what resistance is. And I'm going to show you how we can apply it in here. So in this circuit, we can see we want to find out what this unknown resistance is. We just called it R. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick two points in this circuit. And we're going to figure out what the potential difference is between those two points and what the current is in those points. So I'm going to pick two points. I'm going to call it A and B. So these are my two points that it's referring to in the depth. And we want to find the resistance between those two points. So what we'd need to know is what is the potential difference between those two points. We'd need to know that. And we'd need to know what is the current between those two points. And actually, we've already got that information. So because this is a series circuit, we know that I is 1.5 amps. Because wherever we measure current in this whole loop, we know that the current is 1.5. Potential difference, we also know what it is. We know it's 6 volts, because this is the only component in this loop. So if the EMF we're supplying it with the 6 volts, potential difference here must be 6 volts. So what we can do is we can now use our definition, or the equation that states that definition. So if we want to know the resistance between A and B, which is exactly what we want to find out, we need to do the potential difference. We need to divide it by the current. And that will give us a value of 4 ohms there. OK, so that's a nice, simple example to add as well. But we're going to be using the same process every time. We're going to pick two points. We're going to find two things between those points and use them to calculate the same current. So let's uh, change it up a little bit. So what we're going to do in this circuit is we're going to figure out what the current is. We're actually going to figure out in different places and see that same. So I am going to pick two points. So I'm just going to call them A and B. We can call them whatever we like. So the question is, why have I picked those two points? Well, the reason that I've picked them is I know the potential difference between those two points. We know it's 24. And we know the total resistance between those two points. When we get them together, it's 12. So in terms of stating this, so our potential difference is clearly 24 volts. Because we've supplied it with EMF 24, by the time we've got around this loop, they must have lost 24 volts as well. So we know that potential difference is 24 volts. 
We know that the resistance between A and B, those are in series, so we know we're just going to add those two together. And that gives us 12 ohms. So this was our equation. This time, we want to calculate the current. So we multiply both sides by the current. Then we divide both sides by the resistance. And we know that B is 24, R is 12. You see, I pick nice values to make these calculations easy. And we get a current of 2.0 amps. So that would be the current going between A and B, but actually that means it's the current everywhere else in our cell as well. What we're going to do now is actually change this up. So I'm now going to pick two different points. So I'm just going to call them C and point D. So if we look between those two points, we now know the current going through them because we just calculated it. We know the current is 2 amps going from C to D. And we know the resistance between point C and D is 7 ohms, because that's the only thing actually between those two points. So we know that resistance is the difference divided by current. So what we're able to do now is go, well, what potential difference do we find if we set the voltage across any of these ohms? So we know that multiplying both sides by the current, we get V equals IR. We know the current. We know the resistance. So you can clearly see that that is going to be 14 volts across there. And what that would mean is if we measure across here, that's got to be uh, 10 volts because 10 plus 14 gives us 24 there. So by choosing our points in different places, we can find different things about the circuit. And what I'm doing is I'm picking places where between the two points, I know two of current resistance and potential difference. That's what I'm looking for. So let's have a look at a different one. So we've got a parallel here, and I'm going to show you uh, some points in different places. So let's make my first point here A and B. Why did I pick those two points? Well, I know the resistance between them, and I know the potential difference between them as well. So if I put a voltmeter in here, it would clearly read 20 volts. Okay. So we're clear we can work out this is our current going between A and B. So we know our potential difference between A and B is 20 volts. We know the resistance between A and B is 5 ohms. So we know resistance, potential difference divided by current. We know that if we multiply through by current, we get this. We know that if we want to get current, we divide by R. And we know that's 20 divided by 5, which is clearly 4.0. Okay, so that's what we get if we put our A and B. Let's put them in a different place now. So let's have point C and point D. So we know our potential difference is again 20 volts. And we know our resistance this time is 10. So our potential difference between points C and D is 20 volts. Our resistance between points C and D is clearly 10 ohms. So again, I'm going to jump to the last stage so we know the current. Over R. We've already done that rearrangement. 10 divided by 20, 20 divided by 10 even, gives us 2 amps there. So if we look at these two, if we actually found the current going through our battery here, we know that that should be 6 amps, right? Because it should be 4 plus 2 there, just using our basic rule. So let's actually see whether that's true or not by putting our points in different places. So what I'm going to do is I pick my point A here and my point D here. So if I put a voltmeter in between those points, that's got to be equal to 20 volts because we know we've, we've given each charge 20 joules as they've gone in, so they've got to lose 20 as they go around our circuit, however they went around. So we know our potential difference between A and B is 20 volts. Now, our resistance between A and B, we're going to have to work out. And these two are in parallel. So we know the 1 over the resistance between A and B is going to be 1 over 5 plus 1 over 10, which is going to be uh, 2 over 10 
plus 1 over 10 gives us 3 over 10. And that means the resistance between, oh my God, I don't know why I wrote name. So the resistance between A and B is going to be 10 over 3. Now, because it's not our final answer, I'm just going to leave this as a fraction so we, we don't round at any point. So we want to work out the current between those points. So we know the current between A and B is the potential difference between A and B divided by the resistance between A and B. Potential difference we know is 20. Resistance we know is uh, 10 over 3. So let's bring the 3 up to the top line. So it's 60 divided by 10. So it is indeed 6 amps there. So the current going between A and B is 6 amps, which is exactly what we said it would be based on our two values we calculated here. So depending on where we pick our points, we can work out the current in different places. So what we do is we work out the uh, current in here. So this is the current that we've just worked out, or equally, we have found that current in there. And in this question, what we did is we figured out our current going between A and B. Or in here, what we figured out was our current going between C and D. So depending on where we pick our points, we'll figure out, in this case, different currents. Okay, so let's put all of that together in a pretty horrific looking scenario. But actually, when we apply the laws, we'll see um, it works out very much the same. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for two points where we know two of the quantities between them. So I'm going to pick A here, and I'm going to put B there. Why? Well, I know the resistance between those two points, and I know the potential difference between these two points is 10 volts. So we know that current is potential difference divided by resistance. We know potential difference is 10. The resistance, they're in series, so we're just going to do 2 plus 3, which is 5. That gives you 2 amps there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick two different points. I'm going to pick C and D. Why did I pick those? Well, we now know the current between those two points, and we know the resistance between those two points, which means we can calculate the potential difference between them. So we know the current going from A to B is 2, so it must be 2 going through here. We know the resistance between C and D is 3, so we know the potential difference between these two points must be 6 volts there, which means the potential difference across this one must be 4 volts, because they've got to add together to give 10. So by choosing our points in different places, we can find out ourselves. Now, uh, I'm running out of letters here, but let's uh, use... So I'm going to do the same thing for E and for F. So between those two points, we know that there's a potential difference of 10 volts between those two, and we know the resistance of 10 ohms between those two, so we can figure out the current. Uh, let's start writing what current we're actually calculating. So we're going to do V over R, do 10, divided by 10 gives us 1 amp, whereas this, this current we calculated before was the current going from A to B, um, and then here our potential difference was going between C and D. Okay, So we can get our current going through here. So based on these two answers here and here, what we'd expect to find is that going through here, we'd have a current of 3 amps, right? And, and equally, we'd expect to find a current of 3 amps going through here, which then splits up 2 and then 1. So let's see if that's actually true. Okay, so let's choose our point A. And B, I, equally, I could have put A or B anywhere along these sections. It wouldn't make any difference. So uh, potential difference between A and B is easy. It's 10 volts. The resistance is going to be um, a little complicated because we've got this section in parallel with this section here. So it's going to be 1 over 2 plus 3 plus 1 over uh, 2 plus 8, 1 over 5, plus 1 over 10, which we already saw is 3 over 10, which means the resistance between A and B 
is equal to 10 over 3. So if we want to know the current between A and B, we need to do the V over R, 10, divided by 10 over 3, is 30, divided by 10, it is indeed 3 amps there. So if we measure the current going through here, what this is telling us is going between these points, there is a current of 3 amps there, exactly as we predicted it was over here. Okay, so let's summarize the things that we've seen in this video so we, we know what we should be taking away here. Remember, first of all, the equation is just a statement for the definition of the resistance between the two points. Okay, that's all this equation is. And a lot of people are like, hang on, the definition of resistance is the same as that equation. Yes, it is, because the equation is a statement of the definition of resistance. So what we've done every time is pick two points in the circuit where you know two of the three quantities. So you, out of the potential difference, current and resistance, we know two of those. And we can use those two to find the third one. And the thing we also saw is when we're finding the resistance between two points, remember to check whether our resistors are in series or parallel, um, because that will affect what the true resistance is. Okay, so that, that finishes off our video looking at using V equals IR, hopefully a little bit more precise.